Okay. Um, sorry? Oh, level three. Maybe level three now. Right. Cool. I'll start with level three, shall I? Um, so, level three, actually, Phil, do you know more about this than me? <laughs> I think it's a case where you just focus on level two at the moment. Right. Level three is it's still in the, the draft stage. Yeah. It's, it's been published. Yeah. Yeah. The draft. No, it went out for consultation, and yeah. I don't know the detection is going into the next phase. Yet. Okay, right. Um, but I do know that the program is going to be all as one, in other words, I think it's about six, seven, I'm not trying to be clear, that it's going to be one per project to do. Um, then you've got to do something on software engineering. But also look at, um, it comes under the generics, I'm not sure if it's going to be 3P or 3.11, but it is doing an investigation mm. in an area of technology. Mm. Yeah. And the three. examples are all computer science. Yeah. So have a look under the generics. Yeah. It happened that we were writing it and then they said, oh, but we could use this for the other areas. And we thought, what? But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so have a look at that generic as well, because you yeah. might just have some kids who are really keen on that. So I will say a couple of things about that. Um, so level three, um, as Vilma said, the programming is one big uh, thing, which is great. Uh, there's software engineering, which is actually sort of a whole discipline in itself, about you know, how to work on big projects and so on, and that's one. Uh, I mean, what's in there is just way up it's the here. It's the concept. It's the one about the concept. You've actually got freedom of choice. Remember, yeah. we had freedom and, of choice. And then the, the equivalent of the, the third the, one was the generic. Yeah. And so the, the 144, 244, 344, basically, it, um, it, 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 it used to have three things. I think the draft that's up at the moment has got three topics. Yeah. Four. four. Anyway, it's got, it, there's, there is a draft. I don't know if it's public yet or not, with about six or eight topics in it or something like that. And it says, pick one of them. Um, and basically, remember I put up a thing um, yesterday with a list of a whole lot of topics from computer science? Um, it's basically fills in a lot of those gaps. And so it says maybe you're interested in artificial intelligence, maybe you're interested in computer graphics, maybe you're interested in visualization, which by the way, what they talk about tonight, you know, is um, being able to seek in, um, vines and chop things off and that, right? Um, and, and do an investigation into it. And again, not, not you know, write a system that does it, but talk of, so AI is the classic one, in fact. Um, Heidi's had a lot of work with you on this. She's written a whole lesson plan already for doing that, but, um, because she's really keen on AI, um, and it's one of the areas that she's actually researching separately. Um, and there's a whole lot of really good questions, like what, where is AI actually used at the moment? What are the ethical issues that come up in AI? <coughs> what do people worry about? Um, what are the other questions? Oh, the Turing test, how do you actually say that something's intelligent? Uh, and, and these are all sort of soft questions that you can investigate and look into and so on. Um, and the, um, but, but for a student who's fascinated by this thing of artificial intelligence, they can go and download some chatbots and try them out and you know, decide if they're actually intelligent and give examples of their own conversation with the chatbot and sort of say that shows that it's not intelligent or whatever. Um, so that's, that's the 3.44 one. But, in my view, if, because they've got half a dozen or so topics to choose from, the act of choosing those topics means that they're seeing the range of things that computer scientists think about. What is computer vision? Do I want to do that? Oh, no, it's not interesting to me. And because, remember, the whole purpose of this is for students just to know what it is, not, and, and that's, that's actually useful in itself. And then, yeah, this, one of the generics, um, 310 or 3... Maybe 314 or something. Anyway, uh, yeah, it, it's actually very similar to what I just described with the AI thing, which is pick another topic and investigate it, and, and there's a few kind of things, you know, what, what are the issues in that area? I think it's also thinking of, of you should actually have other areas with it. I think one of the philosophies of the university is they do not want students who are just tunnel vision, yes. they want students who have holistic knowledge. So think in terms of what else are you going to do to deal with the programming and computer science and level three. Is it media? Is it infrastructure? Is it electronics? Is it whatever? Um, because you never program in a vacuum, program in a context. So what's the other context you're going to be working in? Could be robotics, I don't know. That's, that's one thing that the universities have emphasised is um, we're not after hardcore computer scientists coming out of university. We're after people who've done a little bit of computer science, possibly even a whole course at year 13. Um, but they definitely need 
English communication skills. They absolutely need math skills, so Pickfield has done one or two math courses. Um, and then uh, something else, so geographical information systems, maybe they've done geography. Um, music, maybe they've done a music paper. So, so something just to the importance of what you just uh, were talking about. So, like one thing is it's, another thing we sleep for is um, it's, it's very good if we have you know, specific computer science experience, but like a lot of programming is you know taking data in one form and putting it in another form and getting two systems to talk to each other. So that's you know being able to, to do a little bit of everything is also very important. But the other part is yeah, like the more communication kind of skills, specifically in our promotion ladder. Like if you come in as a relatively junior engineer, the expectation is you know, here's a specific set task, do this in a reasonable time. You're never going to go past that unless you can successfully um, like communicate to, to other people. They have to like lead, lead a team, they have to lead multiple teams. That's, that's kind of our kind of progression. So mm -hmm. that part's not to be underestimated. You can't have the expectation that, oh, you know, I'll become an awesome computer scientist and sit so <laughs> there and just bag your money or something. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, one of the things we have mentioned is the non curricular stuff too. Um, so with leadership, if they've led the debating team, if they've led the theatre sports team, if they've been the leader of the orchestra, if they've organised the World Vision fundraiser. Um, because I, I think one of the interview questions that you often hear about is, where have you led a team and what went wrong? Yes. And how did you deal with it? And if the answer is, my team's never had anything go wrong, yeah. then it's like, okay, you have to lead a team. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. But if it's, if it's like, you know, the, one of the mums wouldn't let the member of the debating team travel to Wellington and we all had to pull out of the finals, but then we went and had a talk to her and I got the teacher to do this and we got funding from something. And we, you know, okay, that's, that's the sort of experience we're looking for. Yeah, dealing with real people. Yeah, and, and that is one of the main specific things we consider like looking at some of the um, So, yeah, it's level three. It is important to know where you're going. And also, those, those things that I just mentioned that are valuable. Um, the universities eventually, when we know what level three is, will make a very firm statement that, and you know, someone in the that said, we really need to know yesterday. Well, that's true. It's, it's obvious what we're going to be after. I mean, it's going to be 144, 244, 344. Uh, it's going to be some programming, but it's going to be a lot of, are they excellent at maths? And, and different universities have got different deals available to students. We've got direct entry to second year, if they've got heaps of excellence. Uh, Waikato have got that scholarship exam, if they can do C sharp. Um, Auckland, um, who was it? Um, well, what, what would Dunedin offer if you had a top student who had lots of excellences in maths and computer science? Sorry, what would we offer them in what uh, If a student turned up and said, you know, there's scholarships, is there a entry, special classes? Uh, um, we're really strict on um, asking them to do our first year paper. They can if they, if they really bend our advisors' arm, sit a special exam and, and prove that they can already do our first year paper stuff and get directly into the second year, but it's not common. Right. Um, and, and, and the universities themselves will start changing in three or four years' time as we start getting a stream of very academically capable students to come. So. Sorry, just one more kind of reference point there. So it's something I did specifically mention is, of course, we only we don't don't just hire uh, software engineers. Uh, another important thing is, like, if you're, uh, if you're a product manager, for example, um, you need to know enough engineering to be able to explain to engineers how to build something that you want. So you need both business focus, but you know, if you can't speak enough engineering to get the people who are going to build it for you to make it work, then you're going to fail. So um, even though you've uh, the computer science might not be an end in itself for you. Okay, and programming competitions. Um, so, the, um, I guess the first thing is that there's quite a few around, right? Um, so, the, the one that was mentioned a bit was the NZ IOLOC. That actually for me is that emails come through and say, here's this programming competition, mm. and you're in the middle of the year and you flat out and think, oh, I really should look at that. I'm sure that there'd be something good there, but now I've got this to do and this to do. Or the closing at the end of the month, organise kids and stuff. So, Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
did it. Yeah. 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 Australian one is stopped. We don't have the Australian programming one anymore. They don't run that anymore. I don't have any other, to be quite honest. There's the robotics one. Oh, yeah. But other than that, two robotics um, ones. Robocup Junior and uh, the, First League. Yeah, it's the Robo one. And also there's VEX, isn't it? That's right. There's VEX. Sorry, it's through the Computer Clubhouse. Pardon? It's an organization, the Computer Clubhouse, essentially. They, they do, uh, they've got some collaboration with VEX. These competitions do take quite a bit of commitment. They're, they're extra, extracurricular. They, um, you have to plan in advance and so on. Yeah. Um, we've, uh, we've been running uh, games and stuff in our schools. It's pretty easy to start up even if you've got absolutely zero programming experiences. Your school can still start it up and have always trained up. Um, you just uh, get them to go to programming challenges um, website. Um, there's a PDF that you can download and it's got the programming calendars so they can look for them offline. But online they go there, sign up, it's all free. Um, they can then start practicing and solving the questions on that site, programming challenges. Um, and they submit online, it gives them feedback as they passed and even gives them an efficiency rating how fast their program ran it. Uh, then the boys can just basically train in their own time at home at school and it's, uh, they can self train. I forgive him because he gets same voice because he goes to a voice school. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Project Boiler was another one, I think, like that. Some of the Some of the international ones are in the because of their yeah. So, so these ones are available online anytime. These ones are robotics kind of ones. Um, the NZIOI is for your really key programmers, and they have a camp in January in Auckland, and it's not probably not too late to register for that. It is too late. Okay. Um, and, and and they get a whole week away. And in fact, um, a couple of us lecturers from around New Zealand go and give them a. I, I teach an entire course in one day, but it seems to be the main thing I do is teach entire courses in one day. Um, and, but but they're the top programmers, and they just lap it all up and. These are they're really tough competitions that they go in for. Um, PC for G is very approachable. Uh, programming competition for girls. And yeah. Yep, sorry, none of your students can go for that one. Um, well, not that lot of preparation. And it's not a sorry, not, it's programming challenge for girls, let me get that right. Yes. Can I just say, like what I said the other night, we're very happy to have new venues for the programming challenge for girls. At the moment, it's run in the main centre of Brisbane. Brisbane yep. demonstrates that a small centre can run perfectly well. Usually, with support from your local polytech, you get the program leaders to be your tutors and your partners. Um, so th that one's kind of low key in that your girls turn up with no preparation at all on the morning. They have a great day. They have a bit of a challenge at the end of it, and they go home. And it's in November. Year ten. And they have to be year tens. Yeah. So it's kind of that you know November year ten group that you're looking for something to do anyway. Um, yeah. And, and, so, and running it's not hard either because Margot and Alton does all the work and see, well gets other people to do all the work and sends it out and uh, they. Uh, <laughs> It's very good at organising and uh, that, and so yeah, hosting is not too hard. Can I just do a quick historical play? Uh, internationally, the main student programming competition is called the ACM Scholastic Programming Competition, uh, and winners of competitions here in New Zealand often go on to have a go at that. Uh, up until 1990, that was always won by American universities, Stanford, Yale, Harvard, that kind of place. 1990, first non-New Zealand uh, non-American. University in the world won that, that was the University of Otago. Uh, we broke it, they won a few more years after that, we had another few, and then they lost it to Eastern Europe and they needed it back. Yeah. Um, some of my Chinese colleagues, they spend their entire summer from, 
first thing in the morning to last thing at night preparing for this competition, which is actually not great. But yeah. our, our guys sort of come back after summer and go, oh, we'll just have a go at it. Yeah. But they, they, they tend to do all right. You know, they, they, we've had teams going to finals, uh, which is quite still a huge achievement in itself. Um, Sorry, the yep. other thing is, can't we run the CCES competition? Oh, yes, the CCES. This year because of the earthquake, but it's something the regions could look at just to yeah. run local. And that one's a little bit more low key because it's got it's kind of um, media development and stuff like that in it as well. Information program. That's over the university with Target Information Science Department. They um, have a uh, Data Science Centre, which is really good. And they have a team focused project management on okay. new technology devices. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's more the information science project. Otago Technology Information Challenge, yeah. the OTIC. Uh, it's run Dunedin, Wellington, and Auckland. <coughs> they don't run one in Christchurch, which is rather funny. But we would love to see them actually do that. And if anyone from Otago is here, please take it back and say, please, please, please. Um, because there's some great students that I could put forward for it. And it's one thing that I'm missing down here is those opportunities to basically give students a in to different universities and see what's going on. Not that I want them, don't want them to come here, but I think they get a I think a wide variety of different um, challenges for them really does prepare them. Yeah. And, and we actually, the thing about the competitions is that they grab the really keen students who know this is their passion and they want, and it gives them, into, especially like a, a year 11 student or year, sorry, year 10 or 9 student even, they, they, you just don't know what to do with them. Um, put them into this and get them working on the preparation and stuff for that. Whereas the mainstream curriculum stuff is, while it would be good for those people, it's also largely aimed at people who don't know that they actually like this stuff. Um, the competition is just something for people who know they like it but they can't see anything they can actually do if they want to challenge themselves. There's ICAS as well. And the ICAS is quite useful for the programming bit often is the bit that really knocks the kids back mm -hmm. in that. So if they've got some understanding they can uh, pick up an awful lot of the hard to get um, questions. International used, It used to be the Australian Computer Skills Competition yeah. but now it's been rebranded to the uh, if it's got it's the same ones as the English and the English students do the math students do. There's one for there's one for computing as well. It's an international competition <coughs> assessment in schools. Mm. Um, so John, you blog in a lot of the stuff. Yeah. Are you able to put together those links like to actual? Yeah. So that that's that's been one of the things the interact office is looking at is trying to actually figure out when all these competitions are, who's running them, and put up information on the website about them. Calendar girls. And the calendar just the format of language, the year was the same age. And the website to go to the dates. And the closing dates. There's a regional one in the Bay of Plenty mashup competitions. Oh, the New Zealand mashup. Okay. Right, so just looking at the time. Um, so, 